welcome to Should I Buy This Game? My name is Christine, and if you are aware, which most of you probably are, it is less than two weeks away from Gen Con, the big gaming show in Indianapolis. And so I thought it was time for me to share with you my top 10 anticipated games for Gen Con. Now, when I was picking these games, I wasn't looking at games I already knew about or games I already owned or games I just want to pick up while I'm there. I really, I'm excited to see the unknown, the games that I know nothing about. So for the most part, this list consists of brand new games that are brand new to me that I'm so excited to actually see in person and get to learn about. However, with the one exception of my first game. My first game is from Keymaster Games, which uh, makes parks. And I love almost everything they do. I like own almost all of it. And so for the past year, I have been anticipating the game Harvest. Now Harvest, I think was on Kickstarter probably close to a year ago. And it was before I was looking at Kickstarter. But I'd seen the game, I think probably somebody did a video of it. And I, the art looks so cute. I love Keymaster. It's about farming. And I knew I wanted this game. And I know that if you did back it, everybody was receiving it now. And I think it's coming to retail in August. However, at the show, they're going to have the special, I think, golden uh, version of it with all the, I think, upgraded parts maybe. So I'm so excited to check out Keymaster Games to see Harvest, this great new farming game and I can't wait to play it. So that is my number one on the list. These aren't like rated from one to 10 or anything. It's just the order I put them in. So it's the first game on my top 10 list is Harvest from Keymaster Games. So one of my favorite solo games to play is Calico. So I was super excited for number two on my list is Knitting Circle by Flat Out Games. So I don't know a lot about this game, it's new, so I'm going to just read you a little blurb of how they explain it. They say, Knitting Circle is a standalone follow-up to the hit spatial puzzle game Calico. In this gorgeous, puzzly, tile-laying game, tile game for the whole family, players are knitters competing to create the coziest, most beautiful assortment of garments. Rounds are simple. Collect yarn from the central basket and knit it into garments while trying to get your color combinations and patterns just right. Earn victory points by completing garments, adding buttons, and fulfilling bonus scoring goals. Along the way, your furry feline friend can help you out by reaching their grabby paws into the bag to secure you the best yarn. With variable scoring goals and dozens of unique template cards, each game of Knitting Circle brings a new spatial puzzle to your table. So to me, that sounds perfect. I can't wait to check it out. It's hitting Kickstarter later this year, and it's going to be shipping in 2025. Number three on my list is actually an expansion. It is Bonsai Wabi Sabi. And I really enjoy playing Bonsai. It's a very relaxing game. So I'm interested in checking out this expansion. And the expansion is going to co contain five modules that can be combined together or used separately. There's uh, new shit Shitakusa tiles that double the score of goal tiles, new goal tiles, new content for a fifth player, new type of Zen cards for even more choices, and new solo challenges. And the new solo challenges is what I'm really interested in. Because I really, as I said, bonsai, it's so relaxing. You just want to sit there. So playing it solo and having challenges, I think it's going to be really great. And it's actually expected to be released later this year. Number four on my list is Canopy Evergreen by Weird City Games. Now this is a follow-up to a game called Canopy, but I have actually never played it. However, the Evergreen one caught my eye. It plays one to four players, so there'll be a solo mode. And it says, in Canopy Evergreen, players compete to grow the tallest trees, collect set of wild plants, and create bountiful habitats to help native animals thrive. And it is played over three seasons, and the player who has grown the most bountiful rainforest wins. 
So it looks like a very interesting game and it's set to be released later this year. Number five is Citizens of the Spark by Thunderworks Games. So this game is completely new to me. They say if you like Everdell and Wingspan, then you should like this game. So therefore I am intrigued because I love Everdell and Wingspan. It also plays one to five players. So again, there will be a solo mode. And it says Citizens of the Spark is a variable setup card game in which players take turns act attracting citizens, taking actions and claiming sparks. The more citizen cards a player has of a specific type, the more powerful the citizens actions becomes. The player with the most sparks in their city when the deck runs out wins. This is also to be released in 2025. So we'll have to check it out at Gen Con and see if it is as good as it sounds. Number six is a game called Mischief from Dream Cult Game Studio. And this is the first game from the studio and it is a card game. And I love fairies, so I'm very interested in learning more about it. It sounds sort of like it's Romeo and Juliet in the fairy world where two people want to get married, but they're from opposite kingdoms and nobody wants that. And so the players take on the roles of fairy nobility who stand to lose the most from this arrangement as their position in this new political order is anything but certain. But if you're willing to indulge in some well-timed mischief, you can try to help things move along to your own advantage. The king and queen will be hearing toast and compliments all night. And fairies are known for the penchant for practical jokes. If you can end the night aligned with the correct factions who manage to look good to the king and queen, you can come out with your position assured. So I don't know, Romeo and Juliet with fairies? It's enough to intrigue me to check it out. It's um, to be released in 2025. Number seven is Moon Bunny from Hot Banana Games. It says, hop around the moon, collect ingredients, and craft the ultimate elixir of life. Now, first off, the art on this box is just beautiful. That alone makes me intrigued. It plays one to four players, which means again, there will be a solo mode. It's recommended for 14 plus. So there should be some challenges to the game and all of that interests me a bit more challenging. As well, Hot Banana Games is actually a Canadian company and it specializes in Asian themed games. Now it says here in Moon Bunny, you take on the role of a master bunny alchemist inspired by folklore. Your task is to guide your bunny assistants on a journey through the lunar landscape to gather rare Asian herbs. Each assistant has their own unique hopping movement pattern and it is up to you to choose the right ones for the task at hand. Once you have collected the necessary ingredients, bring them back to your workshop and arrange them in a specific pattern to brew the ultimate elixir of life. The bunny who is able to gift this elixir to the world, bringing health and happiness to all wins the game. And this is actually gonna to come to Kickstarter this fall and to be released later in 2025. Number eight is Nature from North Star Game Studio. And it says, Nature is a modular game system that allows you to build and explore a unique ecosystem each time you play. Experience a dynamic ecosystem where food is scarce and predators lurk. Adapt your species with traits like fast to evade predators, nesting to grow your population, or climbing to reach fruit high in the canopy. Welcome to the beauty of nature where every game brings you new worlds to explore. Now, North Star is going to support the nature game system for the next decade with one to two modules being added a year. So hearing about all the modules being added really intrigued me and can be exciting that this game just can keep changing and being added and new elements to it. Um, and the fact that they are gonna support it for 10 years, I think they're going to assume or they're really expecting it to be a very popular game. It plays one to four players. So again, interested in the solo mode. It's going to be on Kickstarter later this year and released in 2025. But I've signed up for, to play this when I'm at Gen Con. So I'll be able to report back after the show and tell you even more about this game. 
Number nine is Pack the Essentials Wacky Wizard Games because I'm always looking for new cat games and this game is about packing cats into a suitcase. So of course I have to see it and try it out. It plays one to four players, so again, solo mode. So it says here, Pack the Essentials is a lightweight abstract strategy game about packing cats in suitcases. Throughout the game, players work to score as many points as possible by drafting and placing tiles in their suitcase to pack items, cats, and kittens. Collect cat toys and use the friendly neighborhood pack rat service. Players also attempt to complete to-do lists, list goals, and create the largest section of each color tile. The game plays over 12 rounds and the player with the most point wins. And this is to be released later this year. So hello, how many times has the cats got in the suitcase? Now you can just play a game about packing as many as you can into a suitcase. What's not to love? So we're at number 10 already. However, I do have two honorable mentions after this. So don't just leave quite yet. So number 10 is Tower Up by Monolith Board Games. So this game is about city building and plays two to four players. And it says, congratulations, your architectural firm has been selected to renovate the city's downtown and you're not the only ones. To pip your opponents at the post, you need to manage your resources and carefully plan your constructions. Be careful not to leave too many opportunities to your competitors. Each turn you in Tower Up, you either pick a card and take the corresponding resources or use your resources to construct a new building, choose an empty spot, pay the cost to adjacent buildings, pay, place a roof and earn the corresponding points. So living in the city, we always love city type games. So I'm looking forward to this game. I signed up for a demo of this game as well. So I'll be trying it out when I'm at Gen Con and it is set to be released this October. Okay, so the end of the list. So our first honorable mention goes back to Keymaster Games where we started this list, but they announced that they are releasing a new game, Parks Roll and Hike. So it's like Parks, but in like a roll and write, but they called it Hike because they're so smart. Anyway, that's gonna be available at Gen Con, and then it's going to be in retail in the fall. And then the second game that I saw a preview for is Red Raven has released Above and Below Haunted. Now this is a standalone game, but it's based on the Above and Below game, but now it's going to be haunted. Like already when you play Above and Below, you have those strange creatures eating you. What is going to happen at Haunted? We must find out. And Haunted is going to be funding through GameFound later this year and probably being released next year. So those are my 10 games plus two honorable mentions. But what my hope is that when I'm at Gen Con, I wanna check out all 10 of these games, maybe 12, and um, get some video on them. And then I wanna do this video when I come back, but with, with uh, footage of the games and tell you whether I'm still excited about them, whether they will be coming, adding to my list of things I wanna fund or buy later in the year. So I want to redo this video after Gen Con with footage from all these games. Now, even though I did 10 games, there's really a list of like 75 games, 80 games, games I don't even know about that I want to check out while I'm there. I think it's going to be a super busy four days. But if you've checked out the previews and you have games on your list, feel free to leave me a comment and letting me know which games you are uh, excited and anticipate to see if you're going to Gen Con or even just buying after the fact. So we'll see you later. And if you're at Gen Con, feel free to say hello. Until then, talk to you soon.